If you're thinking about signing up for DoorDash or you are a new Dasher, or if you're already active and you just haven't driven in a while, in this video, I'm doing a complete walkthrough of the most current version of the DoorDash Dasher app. This is going to be especially important if you are newer to DoorDash, so you can get familiar with this app before you start dashing. And before we really get into this, if you do have a side hustle really in any niche in this gig economy, check out my Amazon storefront. It's linked down below in the description so you can have the best accessories when you're on the road. And we also just went live with our new Discord community. That's linked down below as well. Love to see you there. So number one, let's go through this main screen that you're gonna see and break down what you're looking at here. So as we zoom in, your overall marketplace is going to be broken down in different market segments that you can see here. Now, segments shaded in red indicate that these areas are busy. And actually, we can see some areas are saying busy, some areas say very busy, and then there's different shades of red to indicate different demand levels. So areas that are not shaded in red, those areas are not busy enough for you to go online. For those areas, the gray ones, you only can go online if you have a scheduled shift. Now these areas that are shaded in red, that indicates that it is busy enough for you as a driver to go online immediately. And you can see that ability at the bottom of the screen here with the dash now button. So what constitutes busy versus very busy and what are these dollar amounts that we're seeing here? These dollar amounts are per delivery bonuses for you as a driver. Now these are very market dependent. Not every marketplace is gonna have the same bonuses and not every marketplace is gonna have the same frequency of bonuses. So what I want you to do as you're getting familiar with this Dash app is looking in your overall marketplace and start to study it, take notes, take mental notes, or even when you're out here driving, think to yourself what days and at what times and what marketplaces typically are the busiest and in addition, which ones get the bonuses. Obviously, the map that you're looking at here, this is San Diego, California. This is where I drive. And after over 1,300 completed deliveries, I know there's about three or four of these market segments that are especially good. Now, down here, if we click on car, we can actually change our dash type if you're delivering with a vehicle, a bicycle, or electric bike. Now, if you change this, DoorDash will adjust the requests that you get accordingly. They're going to say, hey, okay, if this dasher is on a bike, maybe they can't handle this larger order that could fit in a vehicle. Now let's click on this bell in the top left. This is the notification section, basically the news section. You can see DoorDash calls it updates for news in your specific marketplace. So looking at this marketplace, remember we can only go online in the market segments that are shaded red. Again, indicating that it's busy enough for us to go online. And remember, if you do have a shift scheduled, that shading doesn't matter because you reserved a shift. But also important to note, you can only go online in the current marketplace that you're currently in. And that's regardless if you're scheduled or not. You can only go online, let's say this marketplace right now, you can see I am indicated by the blue dot, that's my current location. So I'm in the Mission Valley market segment of San Diego. I can only go online in this market segment. So let's say I wanted to go west over to Point Loma. I'd have to go over there, I'd have to be in that market segment before I can go online. And we can see that echoed here. If I click on any other market segment, that dash now turns into navigate. Also very important to this main screen, that's the promo tab, also in the top left. So let's click there. Now these are all the peak pay bonuses, the promotions in the different marketplaces. All of those are listed here. And we can see they're basically listed by busy times. You can see typically lunch periods, 4 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. or 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. And these are listed by market segment. So we can see here at the top, Mission Valley. Again, that's the current market segment that I'm in. Or south of me, if I wanted to deliver in downtown, those specific bonuses just for downtown are listed here. So what you need to do is look at different market segments, figure out spots that you do want to drive in, and then look at the times and the subsequent bonuses and find ones that work for you. So if I click on one of these, let's say this $2 bonus from 4 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. for Mission Valley. And we can see here the button at the bottom, it says schedule for July 30th, 4 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. 
Now, I already have this one scheduled as an example, and if you do have something that overlaps, of course, this app will give you the notification. So let's say this $2.50 bonus from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. in my current market segment. Let's say that works for me. So let's click on this schedule button at the bottom. Now, you don't necessarily have to drive during that entire shift time. We saw the bonuses were being offered from a certain time, but let's say you can't quite drive for that entire time. You can edit the start and the end time. Now let's see what the app is telling us. It says, we currently have openings from 11.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. So if I try to edit this, you can click on the time and we can edit here. If I try to go backwards until 11 a.m., the app's telling us they only have openings for this time from 11.30, of course, the app's not letting us do that. And the same thing with the end time. We can go in here, edit the end time, because again, maybe you can't drive that whole shift. And then once you're done, you can click save. Now there's a nice filter in here on the top right. If we click that, then we can filter these promotions based on only the marketplaces that we wanna look at. Now this is helpful because maybe there's a marketplace, especially in these larger markets like San Diego, what have you, maybe there's a segment that just doesn't make sense for you. Maybe it's 45 minutes away. It doesn't really make any sense to see those promos because you're never gonna drive there. So let's say I wanted to go online right now. I'm in my current market segment in Mission Valley and it's showing a $1 per delivery bonus, also called peak pay. We can see at the bottom of the screen here, now it says dash now. Note when this peak pay is being offered until. It's being offered until 8.30 p.m. So any deliveries after 8.30, unless this changes, after 8.30 you'll no longer receive that bonus. So let's say I wanna go online. I wanna get this $1 peak pay. I can click on dash now. And again, this is great. This is good for your flexibility. I can indicate when I wanna dash until. Remember those bonuses end at 8.30, so I'm gonna select 8.30 as my end time. So now DoorDash is gonna give us this checklist that we have to go through before we can go online. Number one, charged phone. Number two, enough gas. Number three, the red card. That's the payment card that DoorDash is gonna assign for you. So whenever you receive a order request and it's a red card order, it will say that in the Dasher app. And then lastly, your hot and cold bag and space blankets. Now that is optional, the space blankets. DoorDash, whenever you get onboarded in your welcome kit, they will give you a hot and cold bag, but not space blankets. And then once you're ready to start receiving orders and go online, you can click on start dashing at the bottom of the app. So note how I exited that screen. I didn't click on dash now. The dash app is gonna tell us, hey, you just scheduled a shift. We didn't go online, but we did schedule it from now 7.32 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. And you can edit that. Let's say you wanted to start at eight instead of 7.30. So if we click on this icon, we can actually edit or delete the shift. Now let's click on the schedule tab at the bottom of the app. Now here you can see five days out that are available to schedule. Now, if you qualify for early access scheduling, like you could see here, you can get six days out to schedule. And there's certain criteria to actually unlock the early access scheduling. So I'll leave that link down below in the description. Now this screen is very similar to the promos tab. It's also listed by market segment and it's gonna show you what time slots are available. And it's the same thing here, you can click on one of these and you can edit any scheduled shifts. Now to see scheduled shifts, let's go over here to the schedule tab and any scheduled dashes that we have are shown here. And again, let's say I can't do this shift anymore, let's say something came up, I'm busy, you can click on delete in the top right. Now, if you click on this gear icon in the top right, here's another filter. So again, maybe we don't wanna see the entire marketplace that's available to schedule. You can schedule out different market segments here. Now let's move over to account at the bottom of the app. So important information here, of course, name, phone number, email, and then it's starting point. That's initially what you sign up for on your account. Doesn't really matter, don't worry about the starting point. Again, you can sign up for any available shifts in your marketplace. Moving over to vehicles, here's where you can add different vehicles to your account. And then over to settings, of course, your mapping service. I prefer Google Maps. You can also see Apple Maps and Waze.
Now let's move over to one of the features that I use the most, that's this ratings tab. Here there's a ton of information about your performance and of course your ratings when dashing. So let's click on each one of these. Customer rating here, this is a scale out of five. We can see currently I have a 4.89. And also important to note, this is out of your last 100 completed deliveries. So a few points about your Dasher rating, especially when you start, remember, this is out of your last 100 deliveries. So let's say you've completed 10 or 12 or 15. This is of course gonna fluctuate pretty wildly once you first start. So don't sweat it if you have a 4.3, maybe a customer wasn't happy about something, it's gonna rebound pretty quickly as you do more and more deliveries. Now, how do you maintain the highest rating? Well, there's a lot that goes into it. it really comes down to knowing the app, having good communication with the customers if there's any problems, and then just really being a master of the platform, making sure orders are smooth. We have a whole playlist on driving for DoorDash. If you wanna check those out, I'll leave that linked above. Now, very important to note, especially if you're a new Dasher, you may be deactivated if you have an exceptionally low rating. This is straight from DoorDash's deactivation policy. If you've completed at least 20 deliveries, you need to have at least a 4.2 ranking or higher. Now, if your rating is really low on any platform in this gig economy, that's a service thing or a mastery thing with these apps and I would look at improving that, or you may be deactivated on these platforms. Now, I have coaching opportunities to help with that, help you make more money, of course. At the time of filming this video, that's currently being built. So look for the update down below in the description for that, because that's a good investment, because otherwise, once you're kicked off the app, basically, yeah, can't get back in. Now let's go into acceptance rate. We can see I have a 73% acceptance rate, and this is the amount of orders that you accept versus the prospective orders that you're given. Now, I don't want you to be scared off by acceptance rate, and here's why. You cannot be deactivated on really any platform in this gig economy based on this, your acceptance rating. That's actually one of the powers afforded to you as an independent contractor in this gig economy. So don't worry about this, and actually having a 100% acceptance rating or even 95% really isn't the best thing when it comes to earnings. Because that would mean you're accepting just about everything. And you really need to be looking at, is this order the best for my business? Is this the best numbers wise, money wise? Now let's go into this completion rating. We can see here, I have a 99% completion rating. Now this is something you can be deactivated for. Now completion rate is just that. I've accepted the order already. It is assigned to me. What percent of the time do I actually fully complete that delivery? The only reason you shouldn't be completing a order on really any platform is if there's a tech issue with this app, the app crashes while you're doing the delivery or there's an emergency. So your completion rate pretty much should be close to 100%. Going back to the deactivation policy, DoorDash states you need to have at least an 80% completion rate. But in my opinion, if you're not at 95 plus, really again, 98, 99 in all honesty, then something's not being done right there. Next, let's go into this interesting one, on time or early. I say this is an interesting one because again, this is the percentage of times where you're on time or early. This is tricky because even though the Dasher app may account for some traffic, it's not always accurate. I would say a lot of the times, it's not accurate to a real world traffic or delays. So again, if you're in a larger market, I'm here in San Diego, of course, it could be traffic or it could be something with a restaurant, right? Maybe they just put the order in when you got there. And then lastly, lifetime deliveries. There's no more real insights to that on the app, but a nice metric to see. And then lastly, and probably most important, is the earnings tab. So here's the earnings tab. Let's just generally break down what we're looking at here. So at the top here, we can see our current week's earnings and your week goes from Monday until Sunday at midnight. Below that, we got a visual of our past week's earnings, and then we have a weekly breakdown of our earnings. Now we're given a good amount of information. If we click on one of these weeks, we get a full breakdown of our earnings for that week. We can see the customer tip amount, the active time when you're actually on an order, and then the dash time, the total amount where you're scheduling your shift, then deliveries completed during that week. And then we get our daily metrics, your start time, 
your end time. Same thing here, your active time versus scheduled dash time, then deliveries completed for that specific day. And then below that, we can see each delivery completed in that day and then further breakdowns of a pay on each order. So the first order here, Kalima's Mexican food, it was an $8 payout. We can see $3 of that was a base pay from DoorDash. An additional $3 was a peak pay bonus from DoorDash and then $2 from the customer tip. Now I get questions of how to set up your payment information. So here's how you're gonna do that. What you need to do is click on this bank icon on the top right. That's gonna allow us to set up our direct deposit and our fast pay. So here you can set up your direct deposit and let's go back to the Dasher website just to go over when you get paid. We can see here Dashers get paid on a weekly basis for all deliveries completed Monday to Sunday of the previous week, again, ending Sunday at midnight. Payments are transferred at that time directly to your bank account through direct deposit and usually take two to three days to show up in your bank account. So payments will appear generally by Wednesday night. Now let's go over this fast pay. So if we click on fast pay, we'll see any available funds for immediate transfer. Now I don't have any in there right now, but let's explain what would happen if we had funds for immediate transfer. Now, if you want to access your funds really immediately to do that, it's going to cost $1.99 to make that transfer. Going back to the website, it says note that you must have a debit card, not a prepaid card to use FastPay. Now we can see there's an FAQ here as well. I'll leave that link down below in the description. But when I've used FastPay, it's pretty much instant to get those funds. Now back to our earnings tab, if we click this question mark here, We'll get further definitions of things like earnings, you can see payout schedule or additional help. Now, if you need to contact support, here's a fast way to do it. You're gonna click there, you're gonna click on Dasher help. Now there is some articles, some, you know, again, frequently asked questions when it comes to accounts, etc. But here's how you're gonna contact support. We have tech support and then phone support. So if you got a value from this video, can you leave a like and make sure to check out that Amazon storefront linked below. Do as hundreds of other drivers have done. Make sure you have the right accessories when you're out there driving. You can also click or tap the screen right now for my most recent video, as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.